Cameras, I think, will be off, but we will be there. Yeah. We are live. Good evening, viewers. Shuparna, then let's start. Let's start. Okay. okay. We uh, we are starting the session. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of the team Calcutta Comparatives 1919, I take this privilege to warmly welcome you to the 30th session of a webinar series. Calcutta Comparatives 1919 is an independent forum for research scholar of humanities and social sciences. It carries the legacy of academic space for literary comparisons between Indian languages initiated in 1919. It is a platform for sharing research interests and ideas. We are organizing online lectures on various interdisciplinary topics to be delivered by academicians and distinguished research scholars of different fields. Your remarkable skills will be a great addition to our team. We look forward to a mutual beneficial relationship with you. Thank you for joining us today, our dear viewers. Now I would request Shuparna to introduce our uh, presenter today. Shuparna. Shupriya Banerjee is the former coordinator and faculty of ELT at School of Language and Culture at Robindra Bharati University. She worked with Soka University, Japan as faculty. She submitted her PhD at Center for Comparative Literature, Vishwabharati. She has published at Research Literary ICLA, Oxford University Press India, National Translation Mission, Shahitto Academy, and many more. She has translated Rabindranath Thakur's essay, Megdut, from Prachin Shahitto, which is published by Vishwabharati. Currently, she is working as an assistant professor at AIESR Amity University, Noida. Now, I would request our speaker to start her lecture. Shukriya Di. Yeah, uh, we'll wait for the PowerPoint. And can we make it a little larger? Can we focus it? Uh, because I can't see. Uh, Shukrati, just let me know if it's visible uh, in a large way. Okay. Yeah, no, it is not. It, now? No. Oh, I think uh, it will be like this only. Oh, it will be very difficult then. Okay, for uh, in the streamier the part, it will be like this only, Shukriya. Uh, because if I can't see, then it will be very difficult for. And how can the viewers see then? No, the viewers can see. I. Uh, but. Uh, uh, this will be very difficult. This will be the layout, or I have to make it a solo layout like uh, this thing. I try solo layout and see. That is the largest one on screen. Just a can't moment. See. This is the largest one. I can't see anything. It's very difficult. Okay, yeah. But uh, in the streamyard part, uh, this is the way to share screen. Can we? Can we kind of? Uh, uh, can how can we kind of negotiate it? Uh, can you just read it out from uh, or just uh, see it from another device? Perhaps I can. I'll have to. Okay, then if you can, then I can just uh, show this PowerPoint. 
and uh, you see it in some other device uh, that can do okay then uh, you'll have to wait and excuse me for a moment then i'll have to get my no, that, cab that's fine okay okay okay, okay just uh, just hold on yeah uh, king shukta uh, yes jemi is the screen enlarged in shupriyadi's camera i mean shupriyadi's laptop Yes, uh, she will get a full screen view, and uh, in streamer, I mean, has she like unclear? Yeah, but uh, I think she hasn't enlarged the screen. Maybe just means? ask her once, okay? Anyway, if she can uh, like uh, view it in some other device, then I can. Uh, I guess that's uh, good. Please ask her once because I was also having this okay, issue. Okay, okay. I, I think Shreyadi has screen. got another device. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Shukriya, ha have you enlarged so the screen? Is, uh, full sc are you having the full screen is, view uh, in Streamyard? Open it on my tab. And uh, then, have you like? Are you having the full screen view in your uh, computer? Yeah, I'll open it on my tab. Okay, I'll open it on my tab, and I'll. Uh, I tell you when you can you know change the slides so okay okay that will do yeah just hold on it's it's still uploading this is the age of technology and <laughs> yes. all, no uh, you know, premier is actually not like google meet uh, here This is the we also having some diff here. difficulties over mm. here. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm more used to so Microsoft Teams. I take classes on Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll start my presentation. And, All right. Uh, All right. Then good to go. Yeah. Yeah, we're good to go. It's. Uh, it'll start with the title slide: Rise of the Sutradharini, uh, Women and Representation in Comics and Graphic Novels of India. so uh, that that is my title today and uh, before i start uh, i would like to talk about uh, the you know the usage of register shift where i have used the term sutradharini and why have i used the term sutradharini why have i made a register shift so this register shift uh, is a deliberate because i feel that the word uh, woman is narrators or um, women as writers uh, do not uh, contain within itself the essence of sutradharini because uh, sutradharini actually means the threads the small literal tiny threads which constructs a narrative and that narrative does not only refer to the story it also uh, refers to the context the the place the ideological shifts so uh, i think the word uh, sutradharini is more appropriate for my uh, presentation today when i say rise uh, of course there is this definite uh, shift where uh, we also think that there is a fall so uh, th this goes hand in hand instead of i i would say binaries because uh, there is this you know the motion of uh, rise and fall within uh, the space of understanding literary texts so why some texts are important at certain points of time and why some texts resonate with other texts and this is something which we have to negotiate as learners and as readers of a text so of course uh, through my presentation i will be going through rise and fall both and uh, since i wanted to keep it as a very positive note so i uh, deliberately kept it as a rise however uh, my sense of risk and challenge is uh, conveyed in the feminist reading of this uh, select graphic novels it kind of acknowledges uh, a political uh, a kind of an anxiety a complex anxiety of the political and aesthetic both and in my reading there is this aesthetical pleasure of reading itself of course i have stumbled upon certain uh, areas uh, when i was constructing the edifice of my argument that whether i have been able to read this uh, select texts in my presentation 
as historical moments which have tried to reinforce the uh, you know ideas of gender ideas of uh, dominant ideologies or of class of nation or whether i have tried to privilege as a woman i have tried to privilege sense of resistance i have tried to kind of uh, look at the sense of defiance which is present in in these texts and perhaps this sense of privileging this defiance is also a kind of a personal investment as a woman as a reader and therefore uh, i think uh, the reason why i have looked at the representation of women in the graphic novels of uh, india now uh, i would like to talk about uh, the idea of representation that why have i looked at representation in my presentation today uh, so i think that uh, the idea of real women cannot lie or cannot lie outside the context of uh, an imagined imaginary space because uh, this idea of a uh, real woman is also a product of the entire uh, social political contextual uh, happenings which forms this identity of woman therefore uh, the text which i have uh, invoked in my presentation both as individual and collective they represent women the powerful forced relationship between the author and the subjects and between the multiple selves which has you know produced an uh, kind of an appropriative gesture which moves across the idea of space distance and it also marks a kind of solidarity so uh, uh, the idea of looking at texts from say or conflating them under a western eye or an indian eye so that that is a very fine balance uh, which uh, by my selection of only in uh, indian graphic novels and looking at women as sutradharani is something which i have tried to maintain uh, perhaps this kind of engages and disengages both the politics of women's writing as, as simple stirring stories and perhaps they are not models which can be kind of replicated per se very you know in a very deterministic fashion but they are uh, certain examples of moments small moments uh, of space of temporality of, of which different multiple possibilities coalesce so uh, this is my title therefore my title is rise of the sutradharini women and representation in comic and graphic novels of india so uh, can uh, can we change the slide please uh, because here we come across the idea of comics and graphic novels so uh, and women narrators of course uh, we all have uh, we all are aware that uh, the idea of women as narrator was perhaps something which we came across in the amrini shukta of uh, rigved where uh, the lady uh, of vak or um, amrini uh, kind of uh, represents herself when she uh, perhaps i'll recite a few lines uh, to show that how she kind of it's an idea of self representation when she says aham rudre bhi vasubhi charami aham aditya ruta vishwasya devaiya please forgive my pronunciation so uh, when she says all this aham अहम मित्रा वरुणोभा विभर्म अहम इंद्राग्नि अहम अश्विनोभा एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ सो हियर शी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द लेटर डे टेक्स्ट लाइक गार्गी एंड मैथ मैत्रे वेन दे आर बींग रेप्रेजेंटेड बाय मेन एज यू नो गुड स्पीकर्स और राइटर्स ऑफ देयर ओन स्टोरीज सो हियर द वुमन इज अ ड्रोष्टा इन रिग्वेद we come across uh, several other texts in ancient and uh, say uh, you know and later on uh, this entire work by lalita k and suzy tharu uh, when they have talked about women's writing uh, and we come across uh, uh, very lovely verses from women in the theri gatha when they are talking about their own experiences like shomana ardhakashi then ambapali as she is very famous so these are uh, some of the women we know of 
Andal, we know of Laladere of Kashmir, who have already talked about, you know, Mirabai. Uh, I'm sorry if I forget. Uh, there are all these women, Mudulapani. Uh, I think Lalita K. and Suzy Tharu's uh, voluminous work on women's writing has kind of, you know, showed us that there is always this right writings by women and uh, expressions areas of experience of a uh, small and large experiences which have been there but uh, perhaps uh, sometimes we have forgotten to look at them sometimes we have looked looked at them so uh, it is a part of our existence so uh, I, I guess to my this presentation uh, we will look at uh, a little bit on uh, women uh, uh, kind of making a foray into graphic novels and how they have represented through this uh, beautiful art, uh, verbal visual art. So uh, of course I have used the term graphic novels. Now that is again an area of contestation that why have I used the term graphic novels? Now uh, I will be reading through my slides, a couple of them here, because uh, before I talk about graphic novels as a genre per se, I would like to see, uh, you know, kind of discuss what graphic novels are, and then uh, perhaps uh, I'll discuss a little bit on what, uh, why have I used the term graphic novels rather than using comics or graphic narratives or comics with an X, which is the adult uh, comic. So uh, next, uh, yeah, this is the slide. Uh, comics can be referred back to Rudolf Toffer's uh, Historian and Tom in the 1830 and sometimes uh, to the newspaper comic strip, The Yellow Kid in the US, which began in 1890s, followed by the comic strip dailies, then the standalone comic book in 1900s. The popular uh, terms are fumetti in uh, Italy, Bande de Cine in Francophone nations, graphic literature in uh, Germany and manga and Malhawa in Japanese. Now, the why have I, you know, kind of uh, used these terms are very important in this presentation because uh, you see that uh, fumetti in Italy actually means puff pastries and puff. Uh, Puff of pastries kind of cross refers to the speech balloons they have in comic strips and uh, graphic novels. So it is not only about the narration or the narrative aspect, uh, which is important to uh, kind of uh, assign a terminology to a certain genre, but also its form. So and similarly, Fumetti uh, means a kind of a framework in uh, uh, France, which perhaps refers to the panels which a graphic novel has. So uh, <clears throat> graphic novels is said to be coined in 1964 at a newsletter circulated at Amateur Press Association. However, Will Eisner contends that he was the first to uh, use the term in a bid to sell his book, A Contract with God, published by Baronet Press. And what are the some of the critical uh, responses? Can we change the slide, please? Uh, King Shuk, can we go to the, yeah, some critical uh, responses. Now, uh, these are some of the definitions of uh, comics and graphic novels which has come through. Comics are juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or produce an aesthetic response in a viewer. This was Scott McLeod in 1993. So uh, now uh, it's a little bit contented because why uh, do you think whether these graphic novels are always juxtaposed images in a sequential order? So uh, we will kind of revisit it. Uh, now. Um, Eddie Campbell says that graphic novel are synonym for comic books. Graphic novels no longer um, are, uh, are typical uh, comic books and mo are mostly self-contained rather than continuing stories. I see uh, the term graphic literature as inadequate uh, due to its emphasis on words, uh, words, literature, and I definitely do not uh, wish to use the term comics due to its emphasis on the cartoonies or cartoons or funnies uh, that the term semantically is loaded with. Now, the next slide uh, goes that uh, a kind of a, a to and forth movement uh, with graphic novels and gra graphic narratives. Yeah, can you please change the slide? So uh, graphic uh, novels or graphic narratives. Uh, 
Hilary Shute finds that the usage of the term novel confers the medium a kind of bookish satisfaction as a pretentious bid for prestige. Shute prefers the term graphic narratives as it repeats modernist anxieties about literary value that reemerge precisely at the moment graphic narratives are bidding for respectability. She finds that the narratives may include fiction and nonfiction as well. Shute and Decoven define graphic narratives as graphic narrative is a book length work in the medium of comics. Here, uh, I would also like to uh, discuss a little bit on Neil Gaiman and Hilary Shute. Uh, in Hilary Shute's book, uh, Why Comics? So uh, Neil Gaiman says that he finds the term graphic novel as a, as you know, a kind of uh, a very pretentious, uh, kind of a labeling and he says that uh, imagine if I called a uh, prostitute the lady of the night it's the same kind of a transfer which happens when we call a graphic narrative a graphic novel so yeah and the next slide uh, says that uh, we are discussing graphic the term graphic novel from an Indian perspective here so Pramod K. Nair, uh, who has an immense body of work on graphic novels from the University of Hyderabad. So he says that he, Pramod Nair finds that graphic uh, novels are a misnomer, perhaps, and finds graphic narratives more suitable to discuss te uh, dis describe texts that contain visual and verbal cues in order to address serious themes and issues and comics and graphics graphic novels as less serious as an apolitical and in his work he also says that i am not using the term graphic novel because he finds that the genre the superhero genre is more likely to come under graphic novel uh, and not graphic narrative Graphic narrative takes the tension and dilemmas and concerns of IWE, that is English writing in English, uh, Indian writing in English, therefore democratizing them in a popular meeting, medium and opening up spaces of language of cultural analytics. The Indian graphic novel possesses all the qualification of a literary text, uh, the construction of self-contained words, the character development plot, metamorphic use, uh, uh, metaphoric use of visual and verbal language among others but also adds a visual dimension to the narration so this is what anayar has to say the next slide uh, kind of will discuss that uh, the next slide please comics graphic novels and graphic narratives as descriptors or label references so um, comic is related to cartoons, which was used to uh, designate and still designates in the art historical context, any preparatory sketch used for tapestries, frescoes and paintings. However, they are historically and culturally distinct from the modern kind of storytelling developed by Toffer, Uko and other artists. Uh, the rebranding uh, of uh, comics and graphic novels make particular sense uh i can't see it actually uh in this slide just hold on huh? okay i can't see it but i'll just discuss it so here the contention is about looking at comics uh, graphic novels and uh, uh graphic narratives and uh because of all these factors like i was discussing before that if the emphasis is on storytelling and narration only then perhaps uh, graphic narratives would be more a suitable choice however uh, the idea of uh, form and content like i was talking in my earlier slides that uh, this is a, a, a genre which uses multimodality. It is a transmedial genre which crosses over borders and is very uh, fluid in its uh, hybridity. So, uh, of course, uh, it is not only the emphasis on the narration, it is also about looking at the paratextual spaces of a gra graphic novel. So, perhaps this uh, idea of using graphic novel uh, is also not a, like completely irrelevant then uh, the idea of comics why not why not comics now comics uh, is a, a very culture specific term which had developed uh, somewhere around the culture in united states of america 
and uh, as soon as we kind of uh, term it as only comics or uh, comics with an x it kind of becomes very uh, culture specific and uh, it adheres to a certain rule and convention of a literary genre so uh, for me uh, personally i think comics and graphic novels are uh, very synonymous and i have used a, a graphic novel in this uh, presentation because i think that uh, of course uh, the authors we, whom i have uh, you know used in this uh, presentation have also uh, designated the books as uh, graphic novels and also that uh, i wanted to move away from this idea of uh, a culture specific term which makes uh, which makes sense only in a certain uh, environment so uh, that is why i have used uh, the term graphic novel now uh, please the next slide i'll be talking on uh, about the indian graphic novel and looking at just basics uh, because i also need to talk about my presentation so uh, indian graphic novels the first indian graphic novel is uh, attributed to arijit sen and his work centered around narmada bachao andolan and the problems of displacement due to sardar sarovar dam project this text the text was uh, titled river of stories published in 1994 by the ngo kalpaviksh Richard Branson, Shekhar Kapoor, Deepak Chopra launched a premium, highly prized brand named as Virgin Comics in 2006. Rebranded it as Liquid Comics, and now it is known as Graphic India, and mostly publishes stories on Indian mythology. The big players in this market are Zuban, Sage, Tara, Penguin, Scholastics, uh, Harper Collins, Yoda Press, and Narayana and Blaft. Now I come to uh, talking about the Amar Chitra Katha, which has been rebranded as graphic novels. So, can we have the next slide? The Amar Chitra Katha. Uh, uh, now, uh, just talking about a couple of basics here. It was founded in 1967 by Anand Pai. The first ACK was sold at 75 paise. it had a very strong moral co compass it created broad subjects of heroes and heroines unlike a standalone superhero comic it was generally 32 pages long divided into sequential panels typically 3 to 6 per page and uh, what are the changes uh, we see now that there was this uh, there is this inclusion of regional heroines uh, and naturalists like like and paramvir chakra awardees and there is also one on swachh bharat then uh, earlier on uh, we saw that there was this idea of color where the servants and the menials were kind of depicted with a dark uh, skin tone and the kings and the queens were generally very fair and beautiful however uh, now the representation they are more inclusive and there is representation of color now they are again referenced as uh, graphic novels and they have also made a foray into films in 2011 and uh, they are as available in mobile app and you can buy them on gp so these are a couple of things which uh, the ack has adopted to become more culturally relevant so uh, i have used uh, the next slide please i have just kind of touched on amar chitra katha because a humongous amount of work was done by an american scholar fulbright scholar her name is carlene mcclin and um, she uh, worked on uh, the idea of amar chitra katha and uh, it's a very beautiful uh, analytical uh, scholarly work which i also used it uh, i studied it a lot uh, during my doctoral dissertation when i was writing it however there are a few uh, points there which perhaps uh, i could not agree with and i would like to contest them in this presentation so uh, amar uh, this entire work is around 250 to 60 pages long and uh, in her introduction uh, carlin mcclin has uh, written that the idea of american superhero uh, is kind of superimposed on the amar chitra katha 
and she kind of writes that uh, the American uh, superhero comics have these essential features like a superhero costume, then a secret weapon, a strong moral compass, and um, and then she kind of uh, draws this idea of darshan and says that Amar Chitrakatha uh, became this uh, you know, religious text for Indian, Indians where uh, the gods were uh, you know, portrayed as superheroes and people worshipped them kind of. And she particularly uses this word darshan. And uh, in her 200 and uh, around 56, 58 pages book, where she has talked about different aspects of uh, Amar Chitrakatha, she has dedicated only two chapters to uh, uh, the women represented in Amar Chitrakatha, where uh, it is something around from page 57 or 58 to 83, 84, something like that. And she has also persisted in uh, talking about the women represented in Yamat Chitrakatha as uh, kind of divided between the ideas of uh, Pativrata and Virangana. And then she has also found a category where she finds that there's this in-between category of uh, Tapaswini. And then, uh, of course, uh, this entire concept of superheroes. So uh, I, I felt that. Uh, of course, uh, reading from a Western eye has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, both because in, in, you know, the idea of looking at similarities and differences, it is it, it is the seed from which the, you know, we germinate uh, the idea of solidarity and difference and the idea of a critical inquiry. So here I look at the idea of uh, the superhero uh, as say Ram or uh, Krishna, whatever she has written is very problematic because uh, the, the superhero costume she's talking about is a simple uh, dhoti or a, you know, sari, uh, which is, uh, uh, the, the women here were inspired by Raja Ravi Verma's costume, though she says that women were, uh, you know, more uh, explicitly dressed and they exposed more in Amar Chitrakatha. But I find that uh, the idea of women in an exotic superhero in costume and uh, a, a plain sari, uh, that idea itself is problematic. Second, uh, the, the secret identity and the idea of darshan were uh, kind of an exchange of glance because uh, I find that uh, there is uh, this difference of uh, uh, idea of darshan and uh, simple, simple uh, you know, exchange of glance. Uh, in India, we, we look at uh, a stone as a god and uh, it is also darshan because uh, the 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 validity of the image is not in its uh, you know the image as autonomous it is it goes beyond that framing of that image and it encompasses all the context the kind of feelings so perhaps uh, a kind of a differentiation between the idea of the shabd or the incanted word and pathya which is the you know the felt emotion the cognitive aspect which goes in the image projected so uh, a simple idea of uh, change of glances uh, does not invoke darshan and um, yeah so and women as represented in amar chitrakatha uh, she is uh, very right when she talks about uh, very you know less representation and uh, there's a lot of invisibility of women in Amar Chitrakatha but of course uh, looking at it critically I can we can also question that in this entire work she has produced she it is just two chapters which has she has referred uh, about women and dividing them into these two categories of Pativrata and Virangana which of course is a very uh, kind of uh, I think a prejudiced view of women and um, there are various aspects of representation which uh, perhaps need to be looked at more critically. So that is all about uh, until Amar Chitrakatha. Now uh, I will come back to the Millennium India, what was happening and the rise of the graphic novel and how it kind of changed or did it change, did it actually, you know, as I talk about in the title of my presentation, the rise of this uh, Sutradharini. So did it make a difference? So uh, we'll look at uh, some of the circumstances. So uh, from ACK to Indian graphic novels, uh, can we come go to that slide, please? Uh, so uh, 
what was what were what were the contexts which kind of shaped uh, ack uh, and we moved on to the indian graphic novel so um, rise of indian writing in english with the onset of millennium and incursion of home internet uh, emergence of politically activated terms like folk and fusion which was conflated and hegemonized cultural practice and notions of a pan indian level urban and rural divide between women also grew sharper with the rise of english education and dominated over regional languages and different knowledge systems appropriation and creation of a halo effect around oral histories and physical sites and experience as a part of exotic india quote and quote experience and then finally there was this rise of an idea of an urban goddess so uh, we will look at the idea of an urban goddess in the next slide where uh, yeah please uh, can we go to the next slide so uh, here we look at the idea of the indian woman as devi uh, and uh, i think my first slide kind of de depicted what is meant by the you know concept of the urban goddess or the indian woman as devi now this is a position or a space uh, which has been arrived at by different uh, constructions of media of indian women who are both quote unquote modern and traditional so uh, why this contest over modern and traditional and the concept of or representation of indian woman so these examples from the texts which i have uh, selected here one is shekhar kapoor's devi and the second is gotham Ch chopra he now calls himself as gotham so uh, is myths of kali so uh, how do we find this women now uh, let us look at the idea of devi first now uh, devi as we know is uh, derived from the sanskrit word divya which means light so uh, devi is ensconced in a superwoman costume and she is projected against darkness so that you know the effect is foregrounding her as bright you can see uh, the words devi please uh, look at the uh, letters now devi is symbolized and supplemented by this uh, language here there is the idea of a tilak a trishul a yoni and this this entire uh, you know understanding of this image is con you know conveyed by this uh, style where even in the absence of devi but the presence of such words or such symbols they create a signage and kind of supplement or Uh, add to the image of the indian woman as a modern woman uh, who can be represented by such kind of symbolisms and signage also uh, now we will look at the image of kali uh, please uh, kind of pay attention that how kali is uh, foregrounded against a bright light now these are both uh, you know Uh, women whom kind of we worship and we know their stories from ages now this is a, a strategy where the darkness of kali is foregrounded by light and contrasted with the idea of devi this is the idea which is also percolated in the west where women are divided or women are kind of the goddesses of india are segmented into benevolent type and malevolent type McDermott and Kripal, <coughs> in their book uh, *Myths of Kali*, they write that there is this serious appropriation of uh, the image of uh, Kali and the image of a uh, benevolent goddess with the women in the West, where they appropriate the image of Kali and kind of conflate it with the Western idea of paganism. and witchcraft so this associ association this this identity creation of a woman who is either very beautiful and very benevolent and a woman who is very dark and very dangerous these two ideas are in a kind of a, a state where they they uh, you know coincide and they go on to form the identity of a woman in india in search for uh, an uh, 
Western goods, because you can see the kind of tattoos and the kind of hair color and the kind of, uh, you know, the, the buildup of the uh, uh, women represented. So th they kind of build up this image of women. And these are the spaces from which such uh, ideas flow images. And uh, like I, I talked uh, in the beginning of my presentation that real women cannot lie outside imagined constructs because these are the representations from which the identity of the woman emerges in india so uh, this was one representation of women uh, the next slide uh, will be talking about um, provocation and uh, yeah the next slide please where uh, this if you could you know think about the last slide and this one as well so this female body was positioned within the idea of new indian woman quote unquote and uh, this idea was again uh, derived from a very uh, cliched uh, stereotypical uh, space of modern and uh, uh, traditional uh, this the male gaze which fixed her was not an inert uh, mode of control but it had an aggressive agency and it also dictated how the body performed in various spaces then the idea of exotic uh, india was made prevalent in uh, such representation and this kind of uh, women who were iconized were uh, were made uh, visible and prominent and it was sold to the west and uh, this this uh, space of uh, uh, modern and traditional combined this idea uh, this journey of the woman became a historical uh, continuity rather than a site of conflict so perhaps uh, next slide please so perhaps we have all seen uh, advertisements of uh, women uh, as a uh, you know, a, a superwoman having 10 arms, balancing house, their children, their work, and, you know, uh, moving across with uh, style and panache. But uh, I guess we have to look beyond that image and th also think that how is this image derived? Is Was the transition easy? Of course, the transition process was not easy, and this kind of struggles have been kind of overlooked. And... Uh, in order to uh, you know cater to the idea of a woman who is capable in all the uh, spheres the pressure on women of india has been doubled through such kind of representation so here uh, this is a, a slide taken from the book the snake woman it was also uh, produced by graphic india and shekhar kapoor uh, was the uh, producer and uh, i would like uh, my viewers to look at this image from bottoms up and uh, I have kind of highlighted this image because here this image uh, of this human body is uh, not treated as a human body but as an artistic artifact uh, to start from bottoms up if we note the slab on which she is lying she's positioned as a putative offering uh, for higher powers and the flames that emanate from her body goes against the passivity of her image and the darkness which is framing her uh, kind of makes up for the frame in which she is positioned here uh, I would like to uh, discuss a little bit more on the frame that uh, the darkness which frames her actually goes when we do a critical reading we look beyond the uh, frame uh, the new Kantian uh, argument which said that uh, the images are autonomous and uh, the frame kind of acts to uh, highlight the iconized body. We move beyond the frame and go into the uh, idea of Deridian uh, Paragon, where he says that there is there are context which lies the uh, beyond the image, and the image, like a sign sponge, uh, kind of absorbs this context and frames and becomes the entire picture. So uh, we look beyond the frame and understand that why is this woman, you know, portrayed in this way? So uh, perhaps. Uh, 
a little bit uh, uh, on uh, the next uh, please go on to the next slide because this is a kind of an image which is uh, playing towards the idea of a woman as an offering as a exotic person and also as a passive body on which the male gaze can be transfixed so yeah so the next slide which i have uh, uh, which is uh, talking about the book uh, sita's ramayan here so this is uh, now uh, i have used as a contrast to highlight the idea of the snake woman and sita's ramayan because we find that uh, in sita's ramayan this uh, the 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 uh, storytellers here uh, maina chitrakar and samhita arni i have used the word of uh, i have used maina chitrakar's name here first because uh, it was uh, she who was the potu artist and um, has kind of uh, helped um, samhita arni who is from us to frame this entire story although the story is called as uh, the, the sita's ramayan from a, a women's point of view but uh, first of all i would like to perhaps ask everybody that why do you think sita was uh, uh, you know was the first choice among so many other women for samhita arni then why was potua art uh, deliberately used as the form uh, as the painting art so uh, first of all uh, the potua artists are known to be you know uh, it it was known that they used to cater to people uh, say like rajas and zamindars at one point of time uh, as they used to commission paintings and drawings and for them these icons were important as it established hierarchy and uh, now this appropriation of photo art and which uh, now this book was uh, produced in the labs of china uh, from tara press so now appropriation of photo art and using it in a, in this graphic novel uh, was very it was a political move and like i talked uh, in my previous slides that um, this appropriation of quote unquote folk art as uh, you know a space from which a message could be formed that it is inclusive or a politic uh, polit show political sensitivity was something which was happening as a uh, you know perpetual discourse all over india and it was kind of portrayed as being indian quote unquote so uh, there was this you know use of all this uh, in this book and uh, sita again uh, you know like so many uh, selective uh, selective choosing of women who belong to royalty or who belong as queens or goddesses uh, was being perpetuated by the, the this text which uh, claimed of uh, inclusivity and of uh, uh, kind of um, breaking down the barriers and women empowerment of course this book has certain positives uh, where uh, we can see that um, you know sita has certain point of view but we will be putting all this uh, text through four test uh, please a uh, next slide four text tests these are fun tests these are not to be taken very seriously but these tests have been uh, uh, initiated by scholars in the west in india we have this paucity of scholarly work in uh, this genre and uh, yes i have used this text uh, all this fun test from uh, the western feminists who have talked about how we can look at this characters uh, in the graphic novels and whether they pass this tests or not though uh, so the first test is that of the broke back pose what is the broke back pose now uh, in comics and graphic novels we find that women are positioned in such a way or they are foregrounded in such a way that certain parts of their anatomy is visible and kind of the they pushed on the faces of their readers these poses are anatomically impossible for a woman to have this kind of you know twisting of the body like uh, more than a ballerina i would say so this kind of positionings like you know you can see the breasts or the butt of the woman thrust on your face which is uh, you know tightly fitted into a 
a superheroine costume. So whether these books have portrayed their women in broke back poses, the kind of books I was referring to, like the Snake Woman, Devi, Kali, these all texts have uh, you know women most definitely in broke back poses. However, Sita's Ramayana does not. And why? I will be talking about it uh, as we proceed. Then there is this test called the sexy lamp text. Now, uh, uh, here uh, the scholars in this uh, field of uh, comics and graphic novels, they have instituted this text where they say that if you kind of replace the female body with a lamp, which is like a sh shapely lamp, you know, and you would find that there is no difference. So you can kind of... Uh, picture yourself mentally uh, replacing and find that what is the agency in such bodies which can be simply replaced by a sexy lamp. And again, Sita's Ramayana fails this test uh, because she has not been done up in, a, in the shape of a sexy lamp. Then third is the third test is a Smurfette principle. Now, I'm sure we all have watched this little, little blue creatures called Smurfs and uh, they are cute, they're adorable, and uh, yeah. And there is this one girl, Smurfette. So what is uh, what, what, what does Smurfette do? Smurfette is the love interest of so many boys in, you know, in, in the Smurf world. So when a woman is represented as the love interest of men and they have no other active work they do have no other active function they have no agency they have no voice they are only talking about men then they are you know framed as uh, or they fail the smurfet test and the final test is bechtel wallace test now a uh, bechtel wallace test is a fun test which discusses women or two women in fact who talk or talk about other things other than men so in fact all the tests the text which i have discussed previously fall under this category including sita's ramayan where she is in a monologue half the time talking about ram and her it is only about men but why did sita's ramayan fail this test she failed this test because she kind of epitomizes the the ideas uh, of you know prakriti and she is uh, that those uh, ideas which uh, germinate out of this idea of prakriti like uh, framing women in motherly roles in the, the in the roles of sacrifice in the role of being obedient being passive servile so although she questions uh, certain deeds of ram in her apparent monologue or with her conversation with the rakshasi trijata but still uh, if you find that most of these monologues are uh, and dialogues are about men and men only so this was the kind of background which was happening before uh, i uh, again look at certain nominations in the year 2000 at uh, of comic con india now, can we go to the next slide and i will not be reading this slide it is just for the viewers that comic uh, in the comic con india nominations of 2000 uh, this idea of uh, women as narrators visual artists pencilers uh, uh, you know anything uh, any space is absent there is just one woman uh, who i can see uh, in the team of all male teams of best writers and she also has a male counterpart varud gupta and she's ayushi uh, rastogi the jury was all male of jatin varma vaibhav kumaresh and john lemon uh, you can see the winners uh, one by one colorist, penciler, artist, all male uh, teams. So this was happening, say, around up till 2011, 12, perhaps till 14, because uh, I was looking at it. Uh, this is not, uh, like I told you, that this is not my uh, part of my research or uh, the PhD thesis, but uh, this was something which I was looking at, and I found that, uh, there was uh, this entire scenario happening where uh, it was a very male dominated space and women generally did not uh, find a voice or did not come out. And then uh, 
I come to the title of my thesis, which is the rise of the Sutra Dharini. So uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So uh, this picture is uh, from the graphic novel, Indian Women Fight Back. Drawing the line, Indian Women fi Fight Back. So uh, what, what kind of, uh, what does my critical reading say when I'm looking at, what, what did I look for when I was reading these texts? First, how do women as narrators relate to the institutions of modern life? What are their responses to the market driven industry perpetually in need of maintaining a status quo? How do they embed resistance in the verbal visual mode? The process of access across the multimodality and transmodality of the genre shifting culture and how do they refine boundaries and frameworks? So uh, this was something which I was uh, kind of looking at. And then I kind of discuss a couple of texts. I'm sorry if I miss some uh, texts, important texts. Uh, I, I guess my listeners can add it on later on. But I have uh, uh, tried to include uh, most of them, which has made a kind of impression on me when I was reading them. So yeah. So the next slide. Mm. Next slide, please. Yeah. So the next slide is taken from the book, uh, uh, The Elephant in the Room. And uh, this kind of, uh, you can see that uh, it's kind of subverts the idea of women being defined by their bodies, how they look, what is their skin color. They are ready to take on uh, a lot of things and ready to be, you know, called by any name. So I, I have kept uh, uh, the, the uh, foreword with me. I wanted to read out of the foreword a small bit of it so that uh, we get an insight into the book, The Elephant in the Room. So uh, uh, Manjula Padmanabhan is the editor and uh, she talks about uh, the elephant in the room when she says, that uh, the resulting stories and styles are as varied as the spices that make up the curry. A curry is made of tears and hair, menstrual blood and secrets, bitter arguments and sweet memories, dogs, cats and babies, moons and stars. Some are tasty, some are medicinal, some are magical and all are vivid. Go then, go and see the elephant. So she talks, they talk about the elephant in the room as the major issues that are present in today's world which relate to women and their representation and how these representations make you know small things invisible and uh, and which is a deliberate maneuver to uh, overlook certain experiences which uh, i won't categorize as women's experience alone because that would be actually doing a injustice to feminist practice Praxis, but uh, of course, uh, certain specific instances and experiences which we do not highlight because of certain reasons. Uh, in this uh, um, slide, you can also see that certain uh, movements by women, uh, uh, say the slut walk, uh, say the pinjarator, uh, uh, pinjarator. Uh, um, movement, then uh, Bake Off Azadi, uh, where women protested against, you know, norms of entering their PGs and having a kind of stipulated hour of uh, entering their homes and being followed by a male guardian. So all these movements uh, kind of uh, mediated and this context mediated and produced this volume where women uh, very stubbornly uh, postulated that we are not defined by the names you call me and they readily wore t-shirts with uh, you know read loud that i'm a slut so uh, that is something which, uh, which was uh, you know very new to this uh, genre and uh, it was embraced in a in a fantastic manner and i think this book uh, really de deserves a lot of applause the second uh, yeah uh, the next slide. Now, this is uh, not a book, but it is uh, taken from uh, the uh, on Facebook. You will find this uh, 
column by Rachaita Taneja, and it is called the Sanitary Panels. So uh, looking at the name, it's a sub subversion in itself. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this strip, uh, comic strip, is very interesting, and that is why I included it in my uh, presentation today. Now, you can read. Uh, you can follow the left to right eye movement in this uh, panel and you can also uh, you know kind of read it horizontally and you see that it makes sense and this technique of uh, racheta taneja is very interesting where each panel has a closure in itself then you go on to the next panel and in between the space you also make your own closures so uh, uh, this kind of writing encourages uh, thinking it kind of encourages a lot of contemplation on how you can read and form your own reception around these uh, comics so uh, uh, this is uh, if you can read it then the third uh, the next slide talks about transformations so if we can go to the next slide yeah now this is a very very uh, internationally acclaimed uh, graphic novel and the best part of this uh, graphic novel is that uh, uh, ram dev nini who is the producer of this uh, comic has made it free and it can be uh, downloaded and you can just you you also find uh, a lot of street art on uh, this this uh, graphic novel in particular so uh, dan goldman was uh, the um, uh, illustrator in the first volume and later on uh, in the third volume there are, there is a couple of women in the team i have complimented uh, ram devnini on this and uh, that the third uh, fourth volume is about to come uh, if you follow the um, uh, uh, the uh, Priya Shakti, if you look at it on Facebook or in different platforms, I don't know whether it is on the other plat social media platforms because I'm not there. So if you follow, uh, perhaps you'll find it. Priya Shakti is the name of the graphic novel. So the first uh, novel, which was uh, Priya Shakti, uh, Priya Shakti, uh, this was uh, based upon the infamous Nirbhaya rape case in Delhi. So. Uh, what i found um, very interesting as well as distressing about this comic was that of course priya was made into a hero but uh, being a heroine or being a hero in this comic did not uh, you know specifically um, uh, look at her transformation uh, you know in 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 a, in a in a way which would be very um, I would agree to. So I contest this uh, comics uh, representation of women because uh, Priya, the transition of a raped girl into a kind of a goddess was uh, shown as non-conflicting. It was shown as very easy, uh, very uh, transitory phase from where a girl who was ostracized by her family and her village goes to a jungle. There she finds a Devi and uh, nobody helps her out. Then Devi comes and miraculously uh, kind of, you know, blesses her. And then there's this, you can see in this uh, slide that there's this omnipresent, looming, la you know, large, uh, patriarchal figure of Shiva and uh, he is kind of you know in in a way protecting this idea of you know this women in his life which is and that is also following a hierarchy the fair Parvati and then the dark Priya and then there's this uh, tiger for iconization process so this pattern of hierarchy was retained in this graphic novel but from there we move on to the next one where we look at uh, the idea of a woman who was a victim of acid attacks in Priya's Mirror, which is the second uh, uh, volume. And uh, this uh, second volume, we find that this uh, uh, graphic novel actually, uh, you know, uh, had a lot of uh, cross discussions with actual ad acid attack victims, and they were the characters of this novel. However, they did not, uh, you know, leave this clinging on to mythology. And here again, there was this uh, presence of Parvati as the goddess who gives a mirror to uh, Priya, who is again sit seated mm -hmm. on a 
uh, huge tiger. In the first volume, we see that Priya was not dressed up in any finery. In the second volume, we find that there is this gold ring around her uh, forehead, which is like blinks, Divya Jyoti sort of and seated on a tiger again. So these kind of signages build a kind of image for women that the only recourse to physical violence is praying to a god. And otherwise, it is a very difficult scenario for them. Then, uh, of course, uh, in the third volume, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Parvati uh, gave Priya a magical mirror. And this magical mirror was uh, used to supplement and iconize her iconic status. And without Priya uh, actually involving or being in, in charge of the actions in, a graphic no in the graphic novel, it was the mirror which was doing all the magical works. So this association of magic and mythology uh, doesn't seem to, you know, kind of let go of a certain you know, texts and keeps building this idea of a woman who is constructed by a sanctified, quote unquote, sanctified traditional ancient texts, which give her an identity. And from there, she kind of very easily transits into a, a, a modern woman who fights only because this traditional texts have given her that privilege. So uh, this was the second volume. And the third volume is about lost girls. In India, there is this huge amount of women who are lost and they, we do not know where they are. And uh, this was shared to me. I don't know whether it was uh, supposed to be released uh, last year, uh, December. We, I had a talk with Ram Devdini on this, but I'm not very sure it has released or not. So the third uh, book in the series was um, the, uh, the Lost Girls. So this is uh, another text. Then uh, I would like to talk about another text, which is uh, the guard, a gardener in the wasteland. In the next slide. So uh, the gardener in the wasteland was uh, written by two women team. Uh, the story is written by Sri Vidya Natarajan, and art is by Aprajita Ninan. And it was uh, published by Navyanam in 2016. The artwork is in black and white. It addresses caste system as a systematic, a systemic uh, form of oppression. It negotiates with space and time by cross-referring to girls and women in the millennia who read about uh, Savitri Bhai Phule. It addresses to the weed bed of myths and cross refers to the, you know, quote unquote, legitimacy of Amar Chitra Katha. And it talks about seeds of change brought through visual representation of various associations of education and young girl, college girls in a campus. So uh, it is about uh, uh, the entire story is about um, how uh, uh, Savitri Bhai Pule and her husband uh, fought against the caste system. But in this course of a presentation, there are a lot of issues, relevant issues, uh, which um, both Sri Vidya Natarajan and Aprajita Ninan has cross referred to. And at a point of time, uh, there are two, these girls in, at, at a college campus in Delhi, where they are actually questioning that uh, how did we kind of read and naturalize discourses which were so embedded in patriarchy and the idea of uh, myths and uh, and how the uh, this image build, uh, building process has you know kind of. Uh, been naturalized in the society for Indian women, and uh, why don't we read more about women like Savitri Bhai Phule? The next slide, please. Uh, this is a visual uh, from the book uh, um, Kari, and written by Amrita Patil. Uh, it was a, a magnificent book and one of the uh, books which uh, kind of uh, left a huge deal of impact on me. Uh, this book was uh, is about this girl Kari. And uh, the author very interestingly uh, does not uh, point out at the space where she's located in but calls it a smog city. And uh, Kari is the quintessential uh, quote unquote dangar chori. And 
it is uh, yeah it does talk about um, lesbianism and uh, but lesbianism is not only something which kari talks about there are a million other things which kari talks about it, is, it talks about certain spaces which women demand it's, it talks about it protests against the the bearded man who is in charge of uh, the salary packets it talks about parents who are uh, you know they keep an eye on their girls it talks about uh, men asking women are you quote unquote real lesbian it talks about the naturalized discourse when women are told that um, one day or the other you have to settle with a man and a man has to settle with a woman so it talks about a million other things uh, apart from uh, lesbian lesbianism but it does uh, make a sharp uh, you know um, attempt to um, address issues uh, which is uh, not uh, heteronomic and uh, through her this effort uh, we can see in the next slide that a certain changes came into this world of graphic novels so uh, please the next slide yeah so it it paved the way for gacy zine desi queer uh, horror zine indian queer mythology zine etc then um, also paved ways for interactive zine making workshops in exhibitions and zine bazaars and then there was this coming out of in cosplays and idea of cross dressing so uh, these ideas uh, slowly came into existence and the idea of cross dressing uh, especially in comic cons also came out and a lot of people uh, embraced it uh, you know very openly not necessarily i am not implying that one text gave uh, you know birth to the this thing that kind of equation doesn't happen in real life but of course there are contexts and there are provocations and there are you know certain things from which one gives rise to the other uh, so uh, then we look at across uh, of everyday woes and mundanities and the next slide art takes a stance in indian women fight back so like i was talking and kind of trying to argue about my uh, title slide where i talked about indian women as sutradharini so here in this two um, panels which i have used from this book graphic novel uh, indian women fight back uh, these are very tribal mundane issues uh, and those narrative you know thin strands in, in, in the experience of a woman which these books uh, try to uh, uh, relate and talk about so this is about a red brazier and it is anonymous and uh, the authors uh, kind of you know contemplate that whose brazier it could be and kind of visualize about it but finally it is uh, seen that it is um, nothing as romantic as she kind of contemplates it's a ordinary old woman who comes and claims her red brazier so uh, yeah and the same book also refers you know towards the end of this uh, uh, end of the book where there are women who kind of speak that what do you want there are 20 women who are asked these questions what do you want and there are women uh, who have claimed that we want a braless existence so these are small uh, or uh, we we want an existence where we can wear white and move around during holy so or uh, uh, there are spaces where women have uh, you know kind of say, uh, said that we want to move around in in the public without clutching a bag uh, right here so uh, very simple experiences uh, the second uh, book uh, this picture is taken image is taken from is about um, the story where uh, uh, this this pregnant mother and she's expecting and the baby is dark and she's being force fed uh, certain things which would make her baby fair and the baby is not bothered at all and uh, she's she's kind of you know resisting against her mother and she's kind of having a monologue with her mother and uh, finally she comes out and with a dialogue that ready or not which is here i come so uh, i am dark i don't bother face me so uh, that is the kind of message which this uh, story has there's also a very interesting story here which i have not discussed because uh, the presentation was becoming so long uh, was something about melanin and how this you know products beautifying products are kind of pushed into the society by this particular image of a fair glowing by divya devi so yeah the next slide uh, i will be talking about 
I have meant, uh, titled it as montages. Montages uh, basically refer to a lot of pictures together. And I found that this entire book firsthand, uh, which was published in the year 2016 by Yoda Press, by Arijit Singh, uh, Sen and Vidyan Sabhani uh, was a collection of certain uh, visual images uh, which which are very important, but we kind of uh, you know overlook in search of a narrative. We are always in search of a story. So th that th this is the reason that I use title my slide as montages. So it this uh, story or uh, this uh, entire graphic novel. <coughs> It comprises of uh, RTIs, reportages, memoirs, instructions, e-waste management, and death of the folk art Likhai. And uh, it also has a segment on Begum Akhtar, which was very uh, interesting. And it was um, the, the um, filmmaker uh, and the writer says that the art of the story moves beyond the street of Fazabad to Burkhas in the sky. And... Um, the, the movement was like once uh, you know story to another was like uh, very uh, one after another like uh, with the uh, you know that time and space was very controlled it was almost like a cinematic experience this uh, next slide would talk about the second part of this book which is uh, called exclusion and it was published in uh, 2018 by Vidyan Sabhani and Mohit Kant Mishra and the introduction was through Chashma Didi or the first hand uh, you know uh, first hand narration and uh, it was it talked about uh, exclusion of people beyond, beyond below poverty lines in both urban and rural areas and uh, there was this interface of policymakers and graphic artists uh, the next slide, uh, I have just uh, kind of touched upon certain graphic novels, and I will read them. Uh, it was uh, certain stories which made an impact on me, and I have used it here. There is no place like home by Amrapali, Basumati Rai, and Vipin Yadav. They write about the conflict in Borderland, displacement, riots, and absence of state authority in their lives. Shadow Lines by Neha Dixit and Priya Kurian, based on Neha's 2014 investigation for outlook on seven women who came forward and registered cases against men who raped them in the riots of Muzaffarpur. Someday by Samida Gunjal is about a day in the life of a girl when she rises against her tormentors and becomes a Munda Malini. Then Indira by Devapriya Roy, it is about a girl who is named Indira and finds her illustrate, illustratious namesake as an everyday encounter in various interfaces. Nirmala and Nurmala by uh, Nivedita Subramaniam and Soumya Rajendran is a, a story of star-crossed uh, twins and the journey of these twins in various spaces and Kamala Devi the hero we need by Shibani Rao is about Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay who fought for women's right and freedom from the British Raj and the writer calls the, her as a feminist badass hero then uh, we will look at uh, the series of uh, mile uh, the next slide uh, please so from Rajnikant, uh, from Ramayan to Rajnikant and gender stereotyping. Now this uh, series was awarded the Bal Sahitya Academy Award, and uh, this story is about a young girl, Mail, and it is about her diary and all the mundane things that she writes in her diary, which includes uh, her uh, stories uh, which she hears from her parents and her grandparents on Ramayan, and then also her insights on Rajnikant, and it is a mishmash of uh, various uh, you know life experience which uh, a young girl you know faces as she grows and in in this book she has kind of very emphatically written that um mile writes that uh, whatever the situations be she will not put down her pen so it was a very beautiful uh, book and very well deserved of bal shahitya academy award so uh, finally uh, i come and kind of try to discuss the common grounds that uh, women uh, traverse and uh, here i'm using the word women and not indian women per se uh, so the next slide please so uh, what do we find in uh, women all over the world a lot of uh, graphic novels have come out so uh, first they are recursive they kind of visit the space uh, not necessarily i won't say only of trauma but of different you know experiences and they go back and recreate that space 
then uh, this uh, you know kind of thing they use in uh, graphic novels and comics as a strategy by trying to control the idea the reader in through the closure spaces and the panels so here uh, there is no such thing which we also saw in rachaita teninja's sanitary panel comics that there are non linear page com compositions the lines are broken uh, this uh, use of uh, handwriting the colors are very important uh, we suddenly find that uh, women are uh, going in for uh, black and white or uh, you know kind of messy bodies with the watercolor ra running down uh, from their bodies and uh, not following a specific uh, typical uh, font uh, so it's very individualistic then uh, there, there is this vagueness and open ended uh, uh, you know interpretations of this text because of course everybody is uh, should have their own readings then asymmetries of time place and projection like i was talking about kadi that uh, the place she is situated in is a smog city and you can have your own uh, you know you can derive your own conclusion uh, and she also kind of you know talks about the existence of a slum and this uh, river where she goes on one cleaning mi mission at night so uh, perhaps the reference is to mumbai but this is not kind of mentioned even the use of words like you know danga chodi etc etc uh, as a copyright she, she kind of smokes beeries with her colleagues and uh, explores this uh, you no know, small corporate houses in mumbai but it is not explicitly mentioned and that is a strategy in itself then uh, reclamation of spaces and rethinking about low and high culture uh, by breaking this uh, norm of writing in a set pattern publishing it in digital fonts or uh, you know having this publisher or that and breaking it down uh, is also kind of uh, resistance which perhaps i have tried uh, to privilege as my own personal investment as a woman and uh, there is this verbalization of desire and sexuality casting of tropes of perfect body image color and class they integrate and complicate spaces considered as mundane and trivial there's increased uh, usage of the resistant case uh, when i was talking about these graphic novels like kali and snake woman and um, uh, devi uh, devi chodhrani uh, the, the female body was uh, positioned uh, you know open to the gaze but in in this we find that there is this resistant gaze which works and the uh, the eye of the woman also is not you know vacant like we find that there are fire there is fire emanating from the devi's eye when she is in in those graphic novels but here the gaze is fixed it's resistant in so many places and then uh, it weaves various women's movement along with the story line finally uh, the last slide uh, i think i talked enough so uh, i have come to the end of the conclusion where uh, i say that the story continues by uh, talking about an african proverb which says that until the lioness tells her side of the story the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter goes a famous african proverb women telling their stories is the only way and the most potent way to legitimize their struggles which have always existed but never seen the light of the day so this is my presentation today i am happy to uh, you know any suggestions questions uh, my thank you can. thank you supriyadi for this fantastic and wonderful presentation uh, you discussed the And draw such a broad area in such a short time, and you you presented beautifully the the presentation was. I'm humbled. We actually didn't want it to stop. I particularly I thought like let it go and go. Anyways, we have come to the Q and A session, and uh, King Shubhda, would you please show us the question? Yes. The first question is from Shuparna herself. Yes, don't you think that the digital platform has given certain kind of agency to the women graphic artists? Absolutely, mm -hmm. I definitely think that this has opened up a wide new world 
for the graphic artists in which they not only really present their own uh, you know stories but they also include a lot of context and these are not uh, uh, individual stories these are stories of a collective and this 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 is a transmediated genre they use multimodalities not as binaries but as systems which go together to promote this uh, entire uh, you know text not as a methodological space but as a open space which is very inclusive so i definitely think that digital platform has given a sense of agency to women graphic novelists yeah uh, thank you supriya ji uh, okay next question is from arachika ganguly she says mm -hmm. can graphic novels be a medium for women who have tortured multiple levels of oppression like women who have been through world war or famines etc like we seen in the graphic novel mouse by art spigelman spigelman yes uh yeah you can look at uh, marian satrapi's uh, persepolis also in this uh, regard where yes. she is talking about uh, the entire scenario which causes a lot of havoc on uh, all this situation that women have to undergo during war and famine and why not because like i i kept saying that this uh, this uh, you know novel or this graphic novel or narrative or comics like you call it is a space where we are not only looking at certain things you know as a segment but we are Uh, looking at lot of things which make impact so not only uh, by women artists uh, who have been tortured but also by men it can be taken up and this can provide an alternative way of looking at the uh, the concept of war or concept of oppression perhaps it would you know kind of uh, give it a, a different kind of perspective which i think would be wonderful yes exactly thank you shukriya ji okay we have our next question from prutim dash he says thank you ma'am for your wonderful presentation i want to add few comments regarding uh, bachelor test i find it has certain limitations do you agree that this test can be used as a reliable tool uh all the tests like i spoke and he, the, uh, he has added that when the bestol test is adapted to include social network metrics now uh, yeah uh, prothim das uh, first of all when i mentioned this tests i talked about how these tests are con considered as fun tests so uh, even the uh, people who established this test like alison begdel test alison and begdel uh, it was used to just you know as a fun test to see how this entire matrix of representation of women uh, who are talking about men in their uh, in their conversation happens so it cannot be scientific or logical you know like we use this words to look at research so when you are just using this words in this parameter this framework it becomes difficult but of course this test can be used in the sense that as a critical reader if you are interposing this uh, dynamic this tests and looking and reading the text you can find out that uh, how much percentage of this conversation revolves around men the men in the lives of women so uh, perhaps these are fun tests but they can also be looked at as critical tools of enquiry yes okay okay so uh, let's move on to the next question it's from ananya banerji she asks how are graphic novels as a form of representation be different from that of novels is it better than novels if yes then from which perspective is it better than novels uh i think i'm very unqualified to answer this question that if it is better than novels or not because this uh, you know the use of the uh, term whether it is uh, uh, this comparative analysis what is better than what is uh, very subjective first and second she needs to know your, your opinion maybe she is yeah. asking for your yeah yeah opinion. yeah and uh, look i have grown up on a diet of novels uh, from my childhood but i was introduced to amar chitrakatha by my father so the instant is that whenever i used to fall ill he used to bring me an amar chitrakatha and a packet of chips so uh, it started there and that was my entry into the verbal visual uh, uh, you know medium so i don't think uh, so that you know graphic novel is a better medium or not better than novels but i really think that this is an alternate 
alternative medium which can be explored uh, 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 if you look at you know the art of doodling while writing we come across certain great artists and writers also who have do doodled alongside their writings so this is a kind of a genre which uses multimodality as its platform and it crosses genre say from novel to graphic novel to you know art meme vines so lot of things so we cannot we, it is a totally subjective question and uh, for me I cannot uh, privilege one over another. I don't think so. I'm qualified enough to do that. Uh, uh, thank you, Supriyadi. I, I think, yes, Ananya has another question. She asks, nowadays, many best-selling novels like The Handmaid's Tale are converted to graphic novels. Is it to, solely for better understanding or are there any other motives behind that? Uh, Ananya, let me tell you uh, something. When I was reading the graphic novel Habibi, it took me perhaps uh, uh, more than six months to understand the story because the complexity of the visual art, which uh, is accompanied with the verbal of the text is extremely complex and not necessarily that you follow a sequential pattern or move from the right to left eye movement. There are gaps, there are gutter spaces where you make your own closures. So uh, I, I cannot say that it is for better understanding. It cannot, it is on yourself, how you interpret. It, it depends on perhaps the, like house house's uh, horizon of expectation that what kind of expectation you have and what is the kind of reception or the spaces from which you kind of read the book and how you derive your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I would say it's a very complex medium and uh, you know looking at both the visual and the verbal hybridity of the novel and then its tendency of taking on instantaneous issues of the popular culture and incorporating it in the text makes it even more challenging so yeah i don't think so that it is used to make it easier but perhaps to challenge more uh, thank you, Supriyadi. We have okay. Uh, we have another comment that it was a wonderful presentation, madam. Yes, it was really wonderful, and we enjoyed a lot. I would. Uh, I think we do not have any more question. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Supriyadi, for this for this fantastic presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for speaking on our forum, and. Uh, Thank you so much and thank you our viewers for joining us and being with us today here uh, and uh, good night to everyone. Good night. Yes. Good happy night. Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Yes, happy, happy Diwali. Diwali. Happy Diwali to everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.